What's going on everyone? Hope you're all having a great week so far. I was inspired by Andy Burkett who put up his top 50 Cal Ripken cards in his collection. And his video is very uh, cool because not only did he have it in sequential order, you know, from like his 50th best card to, in his opinion, his, his favorite card, which um, I'm very jealous about. Love the card, Andy. But I thought I would do something similar, but not nearly as extensive. So hopefully this one won't be nearly as long. Uh, just for me personally, uh, we do our podcast, so those are plenty long enough. But I figured I'd go through my top 30. I was going to do a top 25, but I had a really, really tough time <laughs> breaking it down to 25. So like Andy, I'm going to do a few honorable mentions, and they're going to surprise you. And this is just for me. Visual appeal is a big part of this. Not rarity. Okay, so I think that's something that has to be taken into consideration. I'm also not going to do it in my 30th best or favorite card to my all-time favorite card. I'm just going to go through them all and probably end on, you know, one that everybody will most likely know about. But other than that, I'm just going to go um, in the order that I have them in my box here. I do want to mention the cards I have in front of me. I did this for a reason. These are the cards that are on my desk, and they all have significant meaning to me. This card right here, of course, is Joey Cora from my favorite set of all time, 96 Fleur Metal. I pulled a card exactly like this with my father, who I hope is watching. He'll recognize this card, and I've never been more excited about pulling a baseball card in my life than when I was 11 years old and this came out of a pack in Alaska. So he came to visit me, and this came out of a pack, and we freaked. So this card will ever, forever hold um, a beautiful memory in my mind over anything else that I ever owned. So definitely got to say that. My favorite basketball player. It's the only autograph I have of him. It's on card. It's beautiful. It's from National Treasures. Anybody that collects modern stuff knows that that um, is, a, is a wonderful set, and I love that card a lot. Of course, this card, the Griffey Rookie, uh, is in one of uh, Joe's favorite type of cases. <laughs> What's up, dude? But I got this case with an A-Rod in it, and it was brand new. And the case was brand new, I mean, as well as the card, obviously. Uh, had not come out of that case since it was pulled, probably. And it was in such good condition, I wanted to put that Griffey Rookie that I bought with my best friend and now married <clears throat> best friend Mike and so it sits on my desk for that and then uh, this card of course it was in a previous video this was sent to me out of the kindness of a community member's heart and his name is Josh um, absolutely love this card it's one of the only nine or under K uh, graded cards that I'll probably never pop out of the case just because of how amazing of a card it is so I want to have those as my background Explain that, and let's get right to it. So let's go through a few honorable mentions that are going to surprise everybody. Um, first honorable mention, 1998 Bowman's Best Atomic Refractor. This is going to cause a stir. I'm absolutely sure of that. There we go. Camera focused a bit more. Beautiful card. All right. Next honorable mention is one card I just got in today. This thing's beautiful. This is from 2000 Tops Chrome, the Chrome King's Refractor, out of 148. Another honorable mention, I have to put this one in there. This is from 1999 Upper Deck, the Forte, out of 100. The rarest of this is the 10 out of 10, the purple version, which I have yet to see one. And if I do, that's going to be an expensive but exciting day for sure. And I had to throw this card in my honorable mentions because it was one of the first cards I bought when I got back into collecting a little over three years ago during the summertime. I saw this card, I saw it was die cut and it was out of 250 and I knew that from when I collected 90s many years ago that this was pretty rare. So um, yeah, love the way it looks. Love these new pro mold cases by the way. I'll do a little shout out at the very end of this video for the head guy for that because he really hooked me up nicely. And I'll do one more because I remember, for an honorable mention, I remember this card a lot. This card really stands out to me. It's from 1998 Fleur Ultra, the Diamond Producers. One out of 288 packs, and it's just got some amazing sparkle on it. And yeah, if you pick one of these up, which you can do for actually pretty cheap, I would definitely recommend it. So. 
All right, let's just get started with the top 30. Remember, this is in no particular order, so keep that in mind. 1999 Pacific Omega, five tier, five tool talents. This is one of the hardest tiers, minus the 101 to get, and it's out of 25. It, there's nothing much to this card, but I just think the coloration is sweet, and of course, I love when Alex is wearing sunglasses. I just think it looks cool. And to have it out of 25 is, is pretty awesome, for sure. Next is from 1997 EX2000. This is the cut above. And these are just awesome, man. Love the way these cards look. So these were one out of, I'm correct on this one, probably gonna get it wrong, 288 packs. And this was a very expensive product and you only got 18 packs per box, I believe. So very, very tough to pull. The only thing I will say is these would look even better if this part was die cut down here instead of having this black part filled in. I'm not sure why they did that, but maybe how it would fit in the pack, I'm not sure, but I just love it, love die cuts. I know that's a really tough card. This next card, it's crazy, it's so early in the stack, but this is my big national purchase and probably the most expensive card that I own. This is from 99 and Upper Deck, View to a Thrill. This is the version out of 10, and they make four versions. The base, the bronze out of 2,000, the gold out of 100, which I am fortunate enough to have, and then this one. And it was a really amazing purchase, and I got to celebrate it with uh, a lot of my a lot of my buddies from the group, you know, Rodney, Allen, and Greg. So this card is incredible, and I will always cherish that experience getting it while they were there. Next is from 1999, Top Stars and Steel, the Gold Domed. I'm just going to call it a refractor, and these things are incredible. If you have the chance to find one of these in your player, please go grab one. I don't know why he wasn't card number three. I'm just going to throw that out there. The back looks just as incredible as the front. Everybody that has one of these, I mean, we'll put them in their top 10, top 15, top 20. I'll save that one for last. All right, next is from 1999 Mystique, The Established. And it's really cool how they made the players black and white here. And they almost stand out, you know what I mean, like pop from the picture. And definitely one of those cards where the back, again, the back is almost better than the front. But, uh, yeah, I love this card a lot. It's a beautiful card. Can't go wrong with the rainbow foil. These two are going to be kind of together, and these deserve to be shown together. These are both from 1998 Crusade. We did an awesome episode on these, and here is the green and the purple. Man, the lighting here is just awesome. <laughs> I have to say, with these new Pro Mold cases, this is looking awesome in here, looking really nice. This, the green, of course, is out of 250, and the purple is out of 100. <clears throat> just fill up a little bit here. All right, next is from one of my favorite sets from the 90s, and that's Ionix. And this is the Techno Reciprocal out of 100. Now, there was a Techno, which was already short printed, or, or just it was considered a short print insert, which was not numbered, but or subset card. And then you could also get the Reciprocals out of 100. And they're very, very tough to pull. I've broken five or six boxes of this stuff and never seen one, so... Definitely like that card a lot. It's one of the first numbered cards I ever bought. And this is the namesake from our podcast. This is the 1999 Essential Credentials Future Gold out of 115. That was the first card I put in my new pro molds, by the way. Somebody in the group, I told them they could vote on which one it would be just so I could take a picture and see if... I noticed the difference, and that card definitely stood out. Okay, my first shout out to Brant. This is from 1999 Tops Chrome, and this is one of the first cards I bought from him, and I absolutely love this card to death. The pictures are incredible on the card, the rainbow foil, the refractor, I mean, everything is in here. And this is out of 100. Yeah. In the words of Aaron Davis, wow, look at that. <laughs> love it man it's a stunning card for sure huh buddy 
And to go right with 99 Tops Chrome, I gotta show this one off too. I just recently snagged this. This was the top 10 card for a very, very long time. And big shout out again to Jeremy who hooked me up with this card. I love this card, man. And I will always cherish this card to death uh, out of 100 as well. I've been after one of these for so long and, and a refractor has not popped on eBay in like three years. So I'm so happy to have that in my collection now. This one's from 1998. Pinnacle Plus, this is the Team Pinnacle Gold. This is the version with A-Rod on the non-foil side. This is what the foil side looks like with Larkin. I mean, I've been going back and forth on this. I think, honestly, the non-foil side, I really think it looks wonderful unless it was a mirror gold. Obviously, that would take care of the, the, the kind of dark foil going on here. But, yeah, beautiful card right here. Really tough to find. I mean, all, most, most of these cards are tough to find, some more than others, but... Uh, next one is from 1997 Pacific. This is the Kramer's Choice. And this is the first year A-Rod was in Kramer's Choice, obviously after his 1996 season where he, you know, was, was absolutely off the charts in every category, minus steals maybe. But these are awesome. These were in Beckett all the time, and I remember just, just looking at them and thinking, gosh, I would love to have one of those someday. That'd be awesome. So it's definitely my favorite out of all of them, for sure. Recently got this one too, it's from 2000 Upper Deck. This is the 2K Plus die cut. And I know some people might not have this card high up on their list, but with the foil shine and everything going on, it's die cut. The picture, of course, with the glasses holds a premium to me. And uh, being out of 100, this is, this is definitely a big card in my collection and one that I really, really like to look at. So that's why it made the top 30. Next we have I think a lot of people will agree that this will make a lot of people's top list as well from 1999 Ultimate Victory. This is the Ultimate Hunt 100 parallel. And yeah, these sometimes you can't quite pick them up, but you can see that waviness going on. Really like the picture in here too, of course. Um, yeah, but love the pattern on there. Definitely hard to pick those up in a picture and just to appreciate just how you know, beautiful they are. But... The lighting here sure seems to do it. 1998 Donruss update, Power Alley die cut. Man, look at the shine on that thing. I remember picking this up off of Freedom Cardboard right when I first got back into collecting. And even though it's numbered out of 1,000, the first 250 are die cut, which means the last 750 are non-die cut. A lot of people think the non-die cut actually have 1,000, but no, they... Only have 750 of those. Both of them have the same exact shine on them too, so. Definitely worth picking up either. Now, this one's not a special card to look at for most people, but for me, this had to make the list. This is the 1999 Upper Deck Faces of the Game die cut out of 100. And it made the list because when I, I remember sitting on my computer First day of summer break for me when I got done teaching three years ago. I said, I want to start collecting Alex Rodriguez cards again from the 90s. This was the first card that I purchased from it. And I love the picture. It's got this like, you know, kind of almost watercolor paper finish to it. It's got a cool basic picture on it, but it holds a lot of sentimental value to me. So I decided to add that one to the list. Next one is from 2000 Skybox, excuse me, 1999 Skybox Premium, The Intimidation Nation. And some people don't necessarily like these cards. I know they're kind of gimmicky looking, but I think that's kind of why I like them because I remember this being kind of a cheaper product. And these are well sought after. They're out of 99. And it's got a number to Griffey's jersey. Just kidding. Uh, but they look really great. And I, there's no card like them out there. I know these are a pretty big insert in other um, sports as well, but had to put one in there. I got that one for dirt cheap, and I love it. Next one is from 1997 Don Russ Elite. This is the Leather and Lumber, and this isn't necessarily an expensive card, but it also um, has a great finish on it because it's on the front, it's kind of a, like a bat finish, and on the back, it's got more of a leather finish like a glove, as you can kind of see the texture on there. Um, really, really cool card, so definitely had to include that in my video. There we go, we got the focus on it again. Love that card. Cards are getting in my way here. I'm going to try to move them to the right. All right. There we go. 
Next is from 1997 Pinnacle Inside, the Diamond Club edition, which is die cut. And these have some really unique and interesting photos on them. I've noticed, you know, Greg has talked about Tim Salmon's like taking a picture or something, but that was kind of the allure of these cards. They're all very different. And they're not numbered, but they're, I believe, about one out of every 63 cans somewhere in there. And, you know, I know Ben, who's a big Bonds collector, he's opened more than that and never pulled one. So there's people that are trying to make this set, and they're really, really tough. And I've only ever seen one or two go for sale in the three and a half years I've been collecting. So, yeah, super, super stoked to have that. Another hookup from Brandt. This one is, again, a kind of a sentimental value card. It's not very expensive anymore, but back when these came out in 1998, well, 97 was the original, but 98, the game jerseys. This card, I mean, I remember going into car shops and seeing it, as I've mentioned in other videos, and just seeing how expensive they are, and I was like, I'll never be able to afford that. And this was, like, way, way cheaper, obviously, than they used to be back then, but really a cool card. And it's cool. This is kind of the start of the game jersey cards. And now, obviously, you can find game jersey cards for just ridiculously cheap. And nobody really wants them. So they're going to have to do something about that in these current products. And this is from 1999 Topps Gold Label. Class 1 red refractor-ish looking card. But it's a red label. And one thing that's really interesting about 99 Topps is a lot of their cards. It doesn't look like it's numbered, right? Until you look right here. Right there, out of 100. 78 out of 100. Pretty cool. But I always liked these cards growing up, too, because they reminded me of Flair and... Um, what are their cards? Kind of, you know, Flair for sure, but there were some other cards that had, you know, this kind of really good photography and shine to them. So definitely made the list because of that, too. The visual appeal. Probably the biggest deal I've ever had... That's not a rookie card. This is the Epics Moment Emerald. And there's a print run of 30 of these. And somebody listed it for $20 on eBay. And I couldn't click the buy it now. Soon enough, man, they really stand out. All the Epics cards do. But I was super stoked to find this. I remember I opened that package live on camera. That was a fun one to do. These are all going to be one card. This is from 1999 Tops, and these are all the gold refractors. So I'll go in order of the lowest number card to the highest. If you can find a gold refractor of your player, trust me, you won't be disappointed. And you have to put them in these Pro Molds because they won't fit in the Ultra Pros. Not, the Ultra Pros are not quite wide enough. So there is the first card that shows up in the set. Probably the coolest looking one of all of them, being honest with you. I think you can figure out why. Next is this one here. Remember, I got sent a link by a fellow collector and said, go pick this up. It's super cheap. So I was able to do that. And there is the third one. This was the first one that I ever picked up. And they really look good in these promo cases, too. Other than the fact that you can pick up just about every little tiny hair that falls into the perfect fit sleeve. All right, getting toward the end here. Next is from 1996 Circa. This is the Rave Parallel, and these were like one out of three boxes, whereas in the, you know, after that, in the next few years, 97, 98, 99, and 2000, they were about one per box. So you got to love the sparkle finish on here, and it is numbered out of 150. Kind of a cool way to number the cards, too. Be interested to see how those that was done. Very nice card there. My favorite rave out of all of them for sure. This is from 1999 Revolution. This is the premiere date. These are around one per box. One out of 25 packs, but pretty much one per box. We pulled a Joe McEwing on camera, which was really fun to do. And of course they're numbered out of 49. I just showed this off with all my other uh, cards from that set making the rainbow, so. Everybody's seen that plenty of times. This one's from 1999 <clears throat> UD Choice, the Prime Reserve out of 100. And these are so much tougher 
than their print run of 100 suggests because this was such a cheap product and so many people threw these out. I'm sure not knowing what the heck they had. Look, and so anyways, just a stunning card and one that I will never, ever, ever forget about just because it was, it's never, never shows up. We'll go with this one next. Got two more after this, so we're almost done here. Thanks for sticking around. This was my, this is probably my second most expensive, my most expensive eBay purchase for sure. And this is from 1998. Gotta get the set right here. This is from 1998 Flare. This is the Vintage 63, Classic 63 Parallel. I have a rod that's numbered only. I mean, the card's, you know, fairly basic. Centering's almost perfect on it. I mean, a little bit top and left over here, but it's in great condition. It's out of 63. So these cars, I'm sure, they look really similar to just the classic 63 insert, other than that this is gold on the ones out of 63. I wonder how many people misplaced these. But definitely a really, really tough card to find. And this is probably my favorite steal in a car that I remember seeing in Beckett so many times is the most expensive A-Rod rookie. And this is from 1994 score, rookie traded. This is the call-up rookie card of A-Rod and the only way to obtain one of these is that they didn't get this card printed in enough time and so they sent out redemptions in the score boxes, the score rookie traded boxes and you had to send this redemption card in. I think it was one out of 240 packs was the redemption and so a lot of them didn't get redeemed and the ones that are out there um, not many of them are in this condition. This thing came in a screw down that was all cloudy and scratched up. Probably been in there for years and it was in the eBay lot for 20 bucks and so yep here it is. I absolutely love this card. Definitely my favorite rookie of A-Rod. And of course, if anybody is watching this video and knows my collection, if they're probably thinking, you better show a certain card. My favorite card of my collection is still this card right here. It's from 1999 Ionix, the Holographics, Holographics, whichever you want to call it. And Eric, if you're watching, he's not check swinging. He's just getting probably either fouling one off or drilling one the opposite way. So pipe down, okay? But I absolutely love this card. They're one out of 1,500 packs, and they're nearly impossible to find. Although, one just popped up. How many days has it been? I think I'm not breaking the rules here. One popped up about four days ago for $20. Buy it now. And my buddy Jeremy, who sold his to another A-Rod collector, Kyle, <laughs> was able to pick it up. So now he's got one coming back to him. So super stoked for you, man. But, yep, this card, there's everything about this card is, is just perfect for me. Got great rainbow shine to it, foil shine. It's extremely tough to pull, and it came from Ionix, so which is one of the the last 90 90s products to be released. 90 it was in 99, so yep, love that card. And I just wanted to say thanks for everybody who stuck around and watched this video. Before I end, I want to end this video with challenging a few of my favorite YouTubers out there to do something similar. Now. I just realized with the uh, Top's Finest trio that I did that I might have gone under 30 or over. I'm not 100% sure. So I showed off those uh, honorable mentions to make up for it. But I'm, I'm going to issue a challenge to GMAC. Of course, that's my fellow host on the Essential Credentials, Greg, to show us your top 30 plus honorable mentions of Salmon. I would love to see Aaron Davis do an updated Sheffield top 30. He's been picking up some fire lately, and so I would love to see that video. Of course, we've got uh, Mr. Fisher Bike. Yeah, I probably messed that up. I think I got it. Mr. Fisher Bike. Of course, Jason, a uh, fellow YouTuber and friend of mine from the 90s group. I would love to see your top 30, which will probably be mixed because you collect a variety of players. Uh, definitely top 85401. Would love to see your top 30 Bonds cards. I know we did a top 10, but a top 30 or top 25 would be super, super cool. So I think, oh, and of course, can't forget this. I mean, we got two more out there, uh, guys that got me motivated to do videos. Ghost of Zepho, Alan, what's up, dude? Glad you're doing well. Would love to see one of these made by you, minus the full throttle where your hands are like doing this in the video. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, Dead Guy Cardboard. Um, 
you know, Ben, he's, he was a big uh, reason that I did YouTube videos. I used to watch those on my TV all the time, his Larkin video. So we'd love to see what that Larkin PC looks like, man. Let's see a top 25 or top 30 would be great. So there's my challenges out to everybody. Thank you for watching. And this Saturday we'll be interviewing Ben and his buddy Dan on the Essential Credentials. Hope everybody has a great day.